Welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we explore the urban lifestyle and the jungle survival. Today, we're going to have a look at a bushcraft knife from Indonesia. Indonesia is full of talent, great artists and craftsmen, and knife making is actually one of those trades uh, that they do really well at and they can produce really nice knives. You might be familiar with knives from countries like El Salvador and Spain. Well, I'd like to introduce you to knives from Indonesia and this is from Andy Giant Blades. First, if you watch this channel regularly but have not subscribed, please do so to help the channel out. Thanks. So if you're looking for a knife from an exotic country, you want good fit and finish and are looking at an affordable price, you definitely should check out the knives from Indonesia. And what I have is the AGB Bushcraft Knife, AGB of course for Andy Giant Blades, who is the maker for this particular knife. Now the knife is handmade, all the knives are handmade including the sheaths. And this particular style sheath, as you can see, made from leather, there is a loop for a fur rod. And this style uh, of sheath reminds me of the Joker sheaths. Uh, Joker, of course, is a brand from Spain. And you can see very similar style also with the dangler. Now, I would say that in terms of the fit and finish and the quality, I would say, honestly, the Joker sheath is better in terms of the leather. But I do believe you can specify if you were to order from uh, Andy Giant Blades, you want a better quality leather because there's just so many grades of leather and uh, they do custom job. So that's something to take note of. So the leather is good quality. It is thick enough but it's a tad dry in my opinion. So I'm going to take some leather conditioner and I will uh, make it you know, more moist, more subtle. You can see it's peeling a bit here as well. Uh, doesn't affect the integrity, but it's just the aesthetic look that you know, if you're buying a product, you want something with a nice fit and finish. But definitely has that very nice beaten down, almost worn out uh, look for an outdoor knife, uh, which may appeal to some people. Let's have a look at the knife itself. So here we have the knife. And those of you familiar with this pattern of knife would recognize it as very similar to a Ramia's Woodlaw knife or the Condor Bushlaw. Really that same style of knife in terms of the handle and the blade in terms of that Scandi grind. All right, let's clean this up a bit. All right, it looks like we've got that cleaned up. Andy Giant Blades is a knife maker from Bondowoso, which is in East Java, Indonesia. He's got lots of experience in knife making and he can make all kinds of knives. So very experienced. I'll be giving you a link in the description below. You can check him out and see if he'll make you a custom knife based on what you like. Uh, before I talk about the knife in general, uh, let's just have a look at some specs. So the blade length is 4.5 inches. The handle is also 4.5 inches for an overall length of 9 inches. Now the weight is 200 grams or 9 ounces. It's got the drop point style blade. Again, I said, as I said, really reminiscent of the Woodlaw Scandi Grind Mirror Finish. And this is 5160 steel, which is a high carbon steel, which means this will rust. So you have to keep it dry and oil it. But 5160 is a very tough steel, really good for an outdoor knife. Now the edge retention will not be as good as a higher, uh, I guess higher grade steels, but this is a great steel for uh, an outdoor knife in my opinion, as long as you take care of it. So the handle is rosewood. It is a full tang knife. And you notice something over here, this is a bore bearing. And this is really for a bow drill fire. That's right, it's built in, so you can use that as the divot for your friction fire. So I think that's a very interesting uh, way because a lot of times if you look at knives, uh, they might have a kind of a dimple or depression for that bow drill divot and you kind of just use that as the divot. Um, sometimes you have micarta scales, sometimes you have wood scales, but this really you know, reduces that friction. And uh, it's a very interesting uh, concept to have, I think, with a knife. And I've seen this uh, before. This is not the first time I've seen it in a knife. Uh, so I'm not sure how much that has caught on, but uh, definitely interesting, especially for a bushcraft knife. So I mentioned this looks like the 
uh, wood law knife, also the condor bush law, which I have over here. And you can see those similarities there. So different steels, this is 1075, but also a high carbon steel and it can also rust, so you must take care of it. Uh, the wood is different because this is rosewood, this is walnut, and the bush law is slightly larger, you can see just slightly, really slightly. Uh, the handle shape is almost the same, blade shape also almost the same. So if you're looking for an alternative to the bush law or you like the concept of this uh, ball bearing in the handle, uh, this is something you can definitely you know consider. Uh, grip in hand, I think it's fine. Um, just like this style knife, no problem whatsoever. Ergos are fine. You can you know bring your hand up for final work. Uh, if you're going to use this hard and grip, so I can just imagine if you put your middle finger here and press really hard, what's going to happen is you can see you get that imprint on your finger. If you're wearing gloves, that's not an issue, but that's something just to take note of. If you have this, uh, just you, you just have to watch where you're going to place those fingers if you're really going to grip hard. I mean, that's really talking about gripping hard. Now, for this style knife, you're really not meant to chop or do anything too aggressive. It's for finer work, general task, uh, rope cutting, uh, wood processing. You could definitely batten with this, I'm sure, and I'll be testing that out in a while. You'll be doing feather sticking, carving, uh, and all sorts of just general kind of outdoor tasks. Not so much for heavy duty work. But Let's bring this out to the field and I'll share my thoughts out there. So here are my thoughts for the Andy Giant Blades bushcraft knife after some field testing. As expected, it performed everything I wanted it to, whether it's battening, feather sticking, I also did some uh, debarking as well as cutting some limbs. All those things uh, did well. And of course, it can also uh, strike a ferro rod very effectively. And I never get a chance to use this. Uh, I really don't have much experience with friction fires, especially in this part of the world because everything is so wet. Uh, but in time to come, I will, and I'll definitely try out the divot. So I can't really comment on the divot, but I do think uh, it's nice to have that, especially for those who will want to use friction fires. Now, in terms of the comfort, uh, absolutely no problem. So obviously the comparison would be to the Condor Bush Law. And if you look at the handles, the bush law is actually more sculpted. You can see there's a swell for the palm. Now visually, and if you're just to hold it, this, this definitely feels you know more comfortable and you think it'll be more comfortable. But in practice, when I was actually using the knife for all the tasks, uh, really between the two knives, and I tried both, I didn't really feel any discernible uh, difference that would be a deal breaker for me. Now when it came to finer work like feather sticking, now with this Scandi grind, you can't get super super thin curls, you get this kind of curls, you still, you now it slices very well, that's the great thing about the Scandi grind, uh, but the curls you can see are quite thick. Uh, so if you really want it as tinder, you would have to try to get it even thinner than that. Uh, so maybe adding a secondary bevel for a Scandi Vex actually would help it get a better or thinner cut. Of course, it just could be skill as well, and I'm sure that people who can use Scandi grinds and come up with really thin curls. Uh, but between the two, the Bush Law and Andy's knife, I would say that there's not much difference. If anything, I'll give the edge to Andy's knife uh, when I was doing the curls. It was actually just slightly easier. So in terms of what it is, uh, if you're looking for a wood law style bushcraft knife. I think this fits the bill. If I were to ask him to make it, I would say lose the mirror polish and just give me a satin finish. I prefer that for a bushcraft knife. 
uh, but overall very capable knife and I would suggest uh, if you're interested in his knives uh, to just check out the link in the description below uh, contact him get his catalog of different bushcraft knives and can even ask him to kind of mix and match uh, different sorts of things uh, the grinds blade size etc and finish I'm sure he'll be able to co accommodate that and that's pretty cool if you want a custom bushcraft knife uh, then that's definitely an affordable way to get it done uh, one of kind in the world well i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and if you like the content in general please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell thanks for watching talk to you soon